right after Geisei comes Aki, one of the bigger cities on the east side. A long time ago, a samurai family decided to build a wall to keep themselves separate from the merchant working class. Today, some of the wall and a few of the houses are still standing in what is now the Doi Historical District of Aki. You can even walk through them and take a look for free. In front of the samurai homes, you can find the Noradoke clock. It's been running for years, but sadly, it usually has the wrong time. Down the way is the beautiful Uchihara no Park. Great for relaxing, swimming, picnicking, and playing sports. There's also a small studio where you can go and make your own clay pots or glass beads. Seasonal activities include fishing, boating, flower viewing, and of course, playing on the playground year-round. Up on a small cliff, overlooking the beach, and hidden behind some trees, is the laid-back Rock Green Cafe. Owned by the free-spirited Hiroshi and wife Masumi, Rock Green Cafe has a very surfer style, with some of the best taco rice on the east side, and THE best coffee in all of Kochi. If your mind isn't blown by the awesome view alone, then you can always check out the art exhibits that are regularly held by local artists. By the way, Hiroshi's always looking for new artists, so show him your stuff and he might even host a show for you. Hidden behind some construction, and across the street from Kmart, is the hidden world of the Ioki Caves. Once a thriving waterhole, now it's really just an overgrown jungle waiting to be rediscovered. It's like walking onto a movie set for the Jungle Book. It feels completely unreal. No one I know has ever ventured to the ends of the cave, since it can go pretty deep, so there's still plenty left to be discovered. Yasuda, famous for Tosa Zuru Sake and fish. On their heads? Hotaru Park is named after the Hotaru, or firefly in English, that made here every firefly season. With a relaxing view of the river, you can come down and catch yourself some fireflies. Up in the mountains is the friendly little village of Umaji. Umaji is best for camping. There's the super classic Yanase Auto Camp. You can camp in a tent or rent out a fully equipped and quite stylish cabin for the not so rugged types. In this calm and secluded mountain area, you can go fishing for your dinner and meditate on life, known as Sakana Nirvana in the quiet world of Umaji Village. Coming up is Tiny Tiny Tano. Now, I know what you're thinking. That is such a tiny blip on that map. But just you wait. They have an awesome onsen. So pack your shampoo and head on down to the tiny tiny town of Tano and get ready to get naked with other like-minded naked folk. Nahari comes next, and it's just across the river from tiny tiny Tano town. It's the end of the train line. From here, to get further east, you need some wheels. Conveniently, the train station doubles as a bus and taxi station, so anyone without a car is still in luck. The Nahari Naval Park is a nice little place to walk the dog or play a game of frisbee. It's right across the street from the station. Kitagawa Village is just north of Nahari. It's the home of Shintaro, Sakamoto Ryoma's best friend. Kitagawa isn't all too famous, but the beautiful Monet gardens are. Not just any flower pot can be called a Monet. There are specific guidelines to be met before being officially recognized as a Monet garden, and this one makes the cut. And if you're feeling a bit peckish after strolling around the gardens, you can check out the quasi-French cafe that looks high over the gardens. Down in the southernmost bit of East Kochi, 
is the quite large city of Mudoto, once a big whaling town. Now you can take tour boats out and see them live in the ocean. The Mudoto Cape is the southernmost point of the east side of Kochi. The beach mostly consists of large rocks, so it isn't ideal for lounging or surfing, but it is quite beautiful despite this treacherous terrain. Here is also a statue of Shintaro looking out over the water at the statue of Sakamoto Ryoma on the Katsurahama beach in Kochi City. This is also where Kobo Daishi, the founder of the 88 Temple Pilgrimage, first achieved enlightenment. Of the 88 temples, there are four in the east side of Kochi. If you take a windy road up the mountain, past one of those 88 temples, you'll come to an impressive lookout point over Muroto Cape. Looking out, you might even see some of the famous whaling boats. There is an annual whale boat race, which utilizes the old style boats and paddles. Just be warned though, that at the after party, you're likely to see more than one dish featuring whale. And our last stop on our tour of the east side of Kochi is Toyo. Famous for the beautiful Ikumi surfing beach. This is supposedly the best beach for surfing in the east side area. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy your life here on the east side.